Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the degrees of relation, consanguity, the coefficient of relation, and how similar we are to each other actually, genetically speaking. So the human genome consists of roughly 30,000 genes, much less than scientists have thought earlier. And if we compare the human's genome to each other, we will see that all humans share approximately 99% of their autosomal DNA. So we're 99% genetically speaking similar. Just as a fun fact, we share about 60% of our genome with a banana. That's true. And this means that we actually share more DNA with our parents than 50%. Because you know, usually they say that we get 50% of our genes from our mom and the other 50% from our dad. But 50% of the genes that we receive from each of these parents means that we receive those directly and unchanged from them. But it doesn't mean that the other 50% are completely different. So following back a family tree, hundreds and hundreds of years makes genetically speaking very little sense because already after a few decades most of the genes that there are in a general population will be contained in the gene pool. So now I said a few words which I should maybe give you a definition for. If not, and if you know what I meant, perfect. But if you're wondering what a genetic pool is, it's the set of all genetic information in any population of a particular species at a given time. So, for example, it's all the, uh, all the human genes, which are somewhat contained within one or the other individual, living right now. So it doesn't mean that if, for example, 10,000 years ago there was a gene for violet eyes, that would not be in the genetic pool anymore, because today there is no gene for violet eyes. So the genetic pool is only what's today and only for one species, but all its genetic information. While a genome is one organism's complete set of DNA. So, as I said, scientists are usually not interested in trying to finding one individual's DNA maybe 500 years ago from their ancestors, but they are interested in three lines of inheritance, which are interesting for research. For the first of them is the pure maternal line. My genes, then my mom's genes, then her mom's genes, then her mom's genes, and so on. And why is this interesting? So it means we get our mitochondrial DNA only from our mothers, because when an egg cell and a sperm cell fuse, then the sperm cell only gives its genome uh, or its genetic information, the haploid set, into the egg cell, while the head and the tail will fall off. But the egg cell contains mitochondria or information coding for mitochondria, so we will get those only from the mother. The second line, which re researchers are interested in, is a man's pure paternal line. So they observe the genes on the Y chromosome of a boy, then his father, then his father, and so on. Because the Y chromosome is only inherited from the fathers. If you wonder why, you can now click on the banner and see my sex chromosome video. There I'm going to talk about that. And the third line is the genes which are specific for a single population. So, for example, cystic fibrosis and lactose intolerance can be traced back to originating in Europe. So re researchers are sometimes trying to figure out from where a disease or a certain characteristic of a population is arising from, and that can give ideas to where exactly in the genome the gene for this is located and how to maybe treat or alter the structure of this gene. Now I want to talk about the degrees of relation. So you can see on the poster here that, that I drew some kind of family tree with different colors. These different colors speak for the degree of relation starting off in this blue square with an arrow and everything you can see in pink is this squares first fam first degree relatives. These are including parents, siblings and children. And those are those people that this square or this person representing it shares 50% of its genes with. Then in this 
blue, turquoise, greenish color, you can see the second degree relatives. Those are all those that this person shares 25% of their genes with. So those are uncles, aunts, nephews, nieces, grandparents, grandchildren, half-siblings. And then in violet, only a small portion of the family tree are the third degree relatives. Those are great-grandparents and cousins, because those are those people that this person only shares 12.5% of its genes with. And as you can see, I drew a small r, equals 0 0.5, 0 0.25 and 0 0.125 behind it. This is the coefficient of relation. And this coefficient of relation is used to define when a union of two people was defined as being uh, consanguous. Let's first talk about consanguity before I try to explain you what this small r means. So consanguity comes from Latin and means with the blood and this means that someone is descending from the same ancestor. Or in genetics it means that there is a reduction in variation due to meiosis that occurs because of sharing a genetic pool. So it means that two people that are having quite similar genetic information are having offspring together. So as we said before, all humans share around 99% of our autosomal DNA, but it varies a little bit depending on how related or unrelated we are. So it's around 99.6% for those people that are not related to each other, and up to 99.9% .9 of our genome for people that are closely related. And in consanguity, the probability of inheriting two recessive disease coding genes is much higher because two people that have the same ancestors are mixing their genomes again. And for those, the pool of genes that they have and that they interchange with each, uh, with each other is much smaller. Because as we said, first degree relatives share 50% of their genes or they have a coefficient of relation of 0 0.5. Then second degree relatives who share 25% of their genes have a R of 0 0.25. And third degree relatives share 12.5% of their genes and they have a R equaling 0 0.125. And by definition, a consanguineous union is for all those whose R value or whose coefficient of relationship is over or equal 0 0.03125 or being second cousins or closer. And what I think is quite interesting, I wouldn't have thought so, globally it is estimated that at least 8.5% of all children in this world have consanguineous parents. I hope this was all clear with the degree of relations and the coefficient and the consanguity. If you have any questions, post it in the comments, I will try to answer. And if you liked the video, I would be very happy if you could subscribe.